Hello everyone, OT Life Hacker here with Lab Values. I got a lot of requests for the Lab Values since posting last week's acute care safety tips, so here it is. And thank you for those requests, everyone. I have put together all of these notes pulled from multiple sources, which I will reference them in the description box. Also in the description box, you will find access to this resource that you are seeing, and it is completely free. This is something that I made. I organized it by what I found most effective for my study purposes for acute care. So I have what can cause low and high levels and what to look for in therapy and how to respond. I want to share this resource that I made for others because I hope that it can help you as well as um, prepare you for your field works or first days in acute care. You can also use this as an audio to play to study while you're cooking, eating, running, getting ready for your day, exercising, etc. That is something I would have loved to have when I was preparing for my acute care field work. So again, why I want to make it for you guys. There are many, many values to go over. So today we will focus on the CBC the complete blood count. This is one of the big ones that we will always make sure to check. It is so, so important, especially in the ICU and trauma units to look at these values because anything can happen in the session. And you need to make sure that you are providing safe and effective care and you are prepared for anything. I've had everything from syncope, seizures, vomiting, orthostatic hypotension, so you need to know how to quickly, safely respond. And it all starts with checking the lab values and being able to understand them. So let us begin with the complete blood count. This is a um, collection of the white blood cell, red blood cell, and platelets. Starting off with the hemoglobin. The hemoglobin is a red protein that's responsible for transporting oxygen. Normal values, male, is 14 to 18 grams per deciliter. Females, 12 to 16 grams per deciliter. Pregnancy is greater than 11 grams per deciliter. What can increase hemoglobin or cause a uh, upward trend is dehydration chronic obstructive pulmonary, pulmonary dis disorder, or congestive heart failure, severe burns, congenital heart disease, high altitudes, and there can be many more. Uh, you can look for more causes in um, a lot of different resources. Decreases can be due to hemorrhaging, nutritional deficiency, lymphoma, systemic lupus, erythematosis, sarcoidosis, which is inflammatory disease that can affect lungs and lymph glands, renal disease, splenomegaly, which is spleen enlargement abnormally, neoplasia, which is abnormal growth of cells or tissues. Now, how this can affect therapy and what you need to look out for. Low hemoglobin, also known as anemia. What you need to know is this will cause the heart to work harder to meet the oxygen demands. It will cause low endurance and the O2 carrying capacity of blood is decreased. And so there may be a, an increase in the heart rate and respiratory rate. Watch for the low hematocrit and hemoglobin signs and symptoms that can include paleness, weakness, reduced endurance, decreased activity tolerance, delayed response, warm, uh, warmth to touch or sweating, which I would like to add that I have experienced that myself when working with a patient during my acute care field work. I had a patient sit up, they had low hemoglobin and they were warm to touch, they were profusely sweating and so quickly we monitored the vitals and we saw there was an increase in heart rate, as you can see here, tachycardia, 
above 100, and um, the BP was also, also indicating risk of orthostatic hypotension. And so we immediately needed to uh, return them to bed and allow them to rest. And then if the hemoglobin, again, for low hemoglobin, if it is less than eight grams per deciliter, make sure you collaborate with the interprofessional team, especially uh, regarding if therapy should continue and if there is a need for um, transfusion prior to your doing activity with them. And we've had had that several times where the hemoglobin was too risky for us to work with the patient. And so we needed to have a transfusion done and it was done within the day so we could still see the patient. We just um, reorganized our schedule, communicated with the team on if we did co-treatments with others or if we were going to do a co-treatment for that patient. We had made sure to provide that communication and collaboration, which is essential as well to acute care, again, for safety and effective care. Now, high hemoglobin, which is polycythemia, if the hemoglobin is above 20 grams per deciliter, this can lead to spontaneous clogging of capillaries. Make sure you watch for orthostasis, which can be seen through lightheadedness, dizziness, blurred vision, confusion, presyncope, which is a feeling that the person is about to faint, lightheadedness, nausea, trouble hearing, palpitations, sudden weakness, or sweatiness, dizziness, or symptoms of myocardial infarction, and that can be chest pressure or tightness, pain in the back, jaw, chest, shortness of breath, sweat, nausea, vomiting, anxiety, or transient ischemic attack. And that can be called mini strokes. It can cause vertigo, loss of balance, slurred speech, weakness or numbness in one side of the body, congestive heart failure, seizure, arrhythmias. All things to look out for. Now, hematocrit. This measures the. Um, this is a measure of the ratio of packed red blood cells volume to whole blood volume. In adults, normal is 42 to 52 percent. Females is 37 to 47 percent. Pregnancy is above 33 percent. And now, in the sources that I've checked, um, they had varying. Uh, varying levels, just a slight variation. And so you may see mine and be like, hey, that's not what I saw in another source. There are varieties that you may see out there. But for the most part, they are within a similar range. Pregnancy above 33%. Now, for increase and de decrease. Increases can be caused by severe dehydration, smoking, COPD, CHF. Decreases can be caused by pregnancy, hypothyroidism, hemorrhages, anemia, leukemia, cirrhosis, nutritional deficiencies. The low, and as we mentioned, the low hematocrit and hemoglobin results in the heart working harder to meet the, um, uh, for the oxygen demands and vice versa. And for therapy, what you need to know is for low hematocrit, less than 25%, there should be no exercise, but you could do essential ADLs, of course, after conversing with the team if it, if it seems okay to see the patient and uh, with monitoring symptoms. And then for hematocrit between 25 to 35%, you may be able to do one to two pounds uh, for resistance activities. Of course, if it is applicable to your patient and if it's um, appropriate, you'll have to make sure you consult with the team and check through everything else that this is an appropriate treatment for your patient. ADLs and light aerobics, so they can do mobility, walking, short distances. Hematocrit 
over 35%, so getting to the normal, right? You can do resistive exercises as tolerated ambulation and self-care and aerobics. Again, all as tolerated. Monitor the vitals, including the oxygen. Check for tachycardia, again, heart rate going over 100 or high increase all of a sudden. Orthostatic hypotension symptoms. Check for pale skin, headache, dizziness, chest pain, cold hands and feet, arrhythmia, shortness of breath, and impaired endurance. For high hematocrit, monitor for fever, headache, fatigue, bruising or bleeding, weakness, dizziness, and always, always make sure that you consult with the team if it is okay to see the patient, if the hemoglobin, uh, excuse me, hematocrit is higher or lower than the range that it should be in. Platelets. Now, normal platelets should be around 150 to 400,000 per cubic milliliter. Decrease can be due to acute kidney injury, post-operative, viral infection, leukemia, radiation, chemotherapy, malignant cancer, liver disease, aplastic anemia, premenstrual or postpartum. Increase can be due to splenectomy, inflammation, neoplasm, cancer, stress, iron deficiency, infection, hemorrhage, hemolysis, high altitudes, strenuous exercise, and trauma. Therapy. So what to look for when the, hema, uh, when the anemia is low is to watch for petechia. And that is tiny spots of bleeding under the skin. And you can see that as splotches above, um, above the skin, or well, on the skin. It can be dark red splotches. Fatigue, jaundice, which is yellowing of the skin, whites of the eyes, and mucous membranes. Splenomegaly, risk for bleeding, ecchymosis, and for high, watch for the high, high platelets, watch for weakness, headache, dizziness, tingling in hands and feet, chest pain, and always for both, make sure you determine the appropriateness of therapy, collaborate with the team and monitor for symptoms. White blood cell count, the normal is 5,000 to 10,000 per cubic milliliter, millimeter. And critical values would be less than 2,500 or greater than 30,000 cubic millimeters. What can cause an increase or upward trend for the white blood cell count? Can be bacteria, inflammation, acute hemorrhage, steroids, allergic reactions, leukemia. Decreases can be due to bone marrow disorder, infection, AIDS, autoimmune disease, and diabetes. Therapy. Implications for the white blood cell count being too low or too high. Too low, under 5,000 can with fever. Recommendation is no exercise. If it is less than a thousand, you may need to um, isolate for neutropenic precautions. And what that means is the person may be susceptible with the light white blood cell count being so low, they may, may be susceptible to risk of infections. And so you would need to, you would likely have to come in with um, uh, gloving up and excuse me, gowning up, gowning up and wearing the mask, gloves, which during these times is all pretty much normal, right? <laughs> and then watch for low-grade fever, sore mouth, pneumonia symptoms, shortness of breath, headache, fatigue, weakness, anemia. And for high white blood cell count, watch out for um, fever and if they have a 
have fever, determine the appropriateness for therapy, consider the timing of therapy for early uh, morning, low level, uh, for early morning, it's low level, and for late afternoon, it's high peak. And if they are in the normal range, consider light exercise and progress to resistive exercise as tolerated. Now, in the next ones, we would be talking about the electrolyte. If you want the video on the electrolyte uh, lab values, please make sure that you write it in the comments below so that we can go over it. And that is because then I will know that you would like a video on it. So if you have comments or experiences you would like to share, please make sure you do so in the comments below because it is very helpful to our community for people being able to share experiences and what to look out for, what acute care was like for you because it is a very daunting experience for many, which is again why I wanted to make this video to help ease the stress and increase the effectiveness and efficiency you can have when you start in your acute care. And make sure that if you like this video, um, you do so with a like. And if you're going to use the resources that I shared with you, especially if you're going to use um, this uh, Bad Valley resource that I made for you, please make sure that you like and subscribe because that really is helpful. This is completely free, but it will be very, very helpful if you can subscribe to the channel and like so that we can share this with more people. And then also, if you want to see more of these videos to come for the lab values and more on acute care and OT in general, please make sure that you hit the notification after you subscribe. So we go over a plethora of OT related topics and tips, but right now there has been a large request for acute care material. So this is what will be coming for the next, um, uh, next couple of weeks. So again, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. I truly appreciate it. And make sure to find me on Instagram at OT underscore lifehacker and do like, subscribe and share with others. Thank you very much. Bye bye.